הסרט יצטרך להפעיל את ה... Okay. Hey guys, I see that we have a full room here, so thank you for uh, joining us today. Actually, uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, content for this presentation, so just to set the expectations, uh, we're going to cover both Neutron and uh, Tosca and obviously Heat, uh, but we're not going to dive into each one of them to details. Uh, so again, just to set the expectations so that people wouldn't come out of this uh, session disappointed. What we are going to do is actually cover uh, how all of them fits together and what you could actually do by putting them together. And I think that's the thing that you will take out of this uh, session. Hopefully, uh, you'll enjoy it. Uh, just to uh, set the introduction, uh, both myself and Shmuel are close friends and we know each other before we knew OpenStack. Uh, so we're friends not because bit. of OpenStack. I came from the orchestration and application background and uh, Shmuel was coming from Rodware and uh, a lot of network uh, background, and we had chat a lot of times about the two worlds and how they're disconnected and uh, show uh, and shared frustration as a result of that. And at some point when uh, the networking uh, API came to the world, we found that we can actually do uh, things more than just friends, we can actually work together. And that led to a series of presentations. The last one was in the last summit, and this is actually a second uh, version of that. Uh, so I'll let Shmuel uh, take it from here. Go ahead. Okay, let's see that the clicker works or not. Green one. Okay, okay. just tell me and I'll do it. <laughs> so that it will be the clicker? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so very quickly, we'll talk a little bit about uh, why, uh, about the networking in Neutron and why uh, applications and network uh, application and uh, application orchestration and network orchestration should be. Um, integrated together, um, talk a little bit about heat capabilities in Tosca, and then deliver a recorded demo on uh, using heat to scale WordPress. We're actually using the WordPress example with slight tweaks, and we'll work, this, uh, we'll work it over it. Um, and then um, Nati will also talk about the um, differentiation between heat, Tosca, and how they can be used together. Okay. Okay, so let's start with a quick overview. Looking at standard application, both of us uh, are doing uh, application-centric development and networking for quite a long time when you usually look at your application. Um, in general, you can have a very holistic view, right? So you can have both the networking requirements, whether there's the isolated network, whether there's the layer three requirements or the layer four to seven, capabilities, which are kind of the networking team requirements and responsibilities. And then usually where Nati was kicking in, it's basically on, oh, well, the only thing that I care about is having an IP on the machine, connectivity, and then the application port, and then infrastructure, etc. And up till recently, obviously, all those things were kind of uh, two islands, right? So uh, the networking team was doing their stuff, application team, they're doing their own stuff. But with um, clouds, and OpenStack in specific, everything now can be fully orchestrated and orchestrated together, right? And really, when you look at this, the question is, uh, why wouldn't you do that? Because when you look at the application, all of this actually makes sense to treat it as a single thing. Uh, the networking requirements and the security requirements and the application requirements usually are working hand-to-hand -hand with each other and now with the uh, availability of APIs to actually drive everything, it makes sense to actually bind them all together. <coughs> so what's Neutron? And again, uh, how many in the crowd have used Neutron or are aware of Neutron? With a <coughs> okay, so I'm going to do it very, very quick. Um, so Neutron, in essence, gives tenants an API to deliver all what you would expect from a networking function whether that's the isolation of layer two networks, the capability to define the layer three subnets with the inclusion of the IP address management, router gateway, and the security. And then now with the introduction of advanced services, capabilities such as load balancing and service, VPN, and firewall, okay? If you have a very brief look at OpenStack, the way this usually looks is that you get your isolated networks shown in horizon, 
VMs are going to be connected. A VM that can be connected to multiple network will actually show uh, connectivity to different networks. You see here the router. You don't really yet see the uh, layer 4 to 7 functionality. Okay? And all of this is, in essence, could be bound together with the compute and with the application using heat. Yes, yeah, so basically heat was born uh, originally as an alternative, an open stack alternative to cloud formation. Actually, it uh, started as an implementation of Amazon cloud formation with the same API, same syntax, same even blueprint model, uh, I think, at the, uh, the get-go. Uh, this is actually the definition that I took from uh, one of the uh, Red Hat presentation. Uh, all the references, by the way, to the material, to the example, to the code example, would be uh, shared in this uh, slide, so you don't need to uh, take it. We'll share it on uh, SlideShare uh, just after this session. Uh, but generally speaking, the main thing that I think, uh, if you really try to draw a line of what it does, it maps the API that OpenStack provides into a document model. And you could see every element in the API, represented in that document model. Why is the document model is important? Why are we not just using the API? Because with document, it's easier uh, means to share things, to do versioning, to put it in GitHub, uh, to script it, uh, to obviously model it in a UI, a nice visualized UI, and also read it. So you could read a plan and potentially even understand what's going on there. Uh, so the two models, the API and uh, the, uh, the actual document itself interject, and you could see the mapping actually maps to concrete elements that you should be familiar with if you're dealing with OpenStack API. But the core thing to take from that is that it's really a mapping, a one-to-one -one mapping between the API and the document model. Uh, from an architecture perspective, there are three main components that you would see if you run it on DevStack. Uh, again, I borrowed that slide from a, a Red Hat presentation. One of them is the EAT API, which provides the, uh, the northbound API to the application itself, uh, which is marked as you. And then we have a different API or different models of API to interact with it. One of them is the CFN, which is the Cloud Formation API. Obviously, there is the hot syntax, and I'm going to talk more about it uh, as we go to the presentation. And the engine itself is decoupled from the API. So potentially, you see a hint there in the heat architecture itself that it can talk to different models of uh, blueprints and not necessarily just one, even though there is one that is called HOT and CloudFormation that is currently implemented. And if you're familiar with OpenStack, you're probably familiar with that picture. Uh, you could see that it's actually part of the Horizon stack. And there is a tab there that is called orchestration. And out of that, there is stack. This is the graphical view of a stack after it's been deployed. Again, this is for those who are less familiar with that. This is what you get. Uh, even with DevStack, when you, when you start HIT and when you deploy a stack on HIT. Again, just for familiarity there. So this brings me to Tosca. Tosca actually started from a, a, a relatively different uh, model. It started with a more application-centric view, uh, which is actually agnostic to the infrastructure itself. And this is, again, a slide that was taken uh, from one of the last uh, Tosca presentations that represent the uh, Tosca status in uh, 2014. And the, 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 the main difference is that with Tosca, I'm starting with the topology, with the application. I'm describing the component of the application, whether they are software or infrastructure, we don't necessarily care. Every element in the stack is a node. Every element can be described. It doesn't have to be an infrastructure element. And therefore, what you could see is a topology also model. Things like relationship also being model. Things like dependency being modeled as part of that because they describe the component of my application. And as I said, every element in the, uh, uh, in the application, including the lifecycle, including the processes, the processes that we do to actually manage the application, can be described using that model and that language. And the other thing to note here is the portability. Because of that definition, Tosca is not specific to an infrastructure. And they, uh, the relationship between the application model and blueprint to the infrastructure is that it's one fitting the other. So when I'm deploying an application, there is the infrastructure that need to match the actual application itself. And usually, that matching happens to be the actual result of the orchestration. So I'm defining, in a way, the requirements of what I want to achieve in the blueprint. And then the implementation of the orchestration need to do the matchmaking with the right uh, resources. Uh, and the the, the, that matchmaking needs to be, or could be, 
uh, agnostic to the actual infrastructure itself. So in a way, one byproduct of that mechanism is that it can abstract the blueprint from the underlying infrastructure itself. We'll, we'll see how that looks like later on. But that's kind of the idea here. One of them is more application-centric. The other one is it's agnostic to the infrastructure itself. <coughs> uh, one thing to note, again, uh, coming to what I just said, is that we map not just resources. We also map policies. We map processes. Uh, we map alerts. There is much more into it, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to dive too much into the details of that. If we really look at the state of uh, where Tosca sits right now, I think it's uh, when we, I think, first presented it in uh, Hong Kong. I think that was two years ago or a year ago. Um, most people in the room didn't even hear about Tosca. Uh, and most people knew Tosca was the people who actually dealt with that. And today, we see that the adoption of Tosca, especially within the OpenStack community, has grown quite substantially. There, and there is a reason for that. Part of the reason is because, in my view, a lot of the users of OpenStack have almost the same requirements, and they do look at OpenStack as one of the target environments that they're running with, and not necessarily the only one. So as, as, as close as we get to the application, you'll understand why people are calling me uh, this hour <laughs> later on towards the demo, so it's actually part of that demo that I was supposed to be uh, showing today. Uh, but anyway, um, that's kind of the state of, uh, of OpenStack. And uh, one of the things to note again is that it's becoming very, very popular. And I think the room here, uh, the size of the, uh, the room and the people in this room is, a, is the uh, <coughs> best indication to that. Uh, since we're running examples here, we will need to run the Tosca implementation on a product, on something. We cannot just talk about it theoretically. So you could see that there are several implementation for that. So I'm going to use Cloudify. This is where I'm coming from. Uh, I'm representing Cloudify in this uh, room. And obviously, OpenStack Heat. So most of the presentation would be around Heat, and then we'll compare what we've done with Heat with Tosca, and then we'll see how we can actually combine the two. That's kind of the flow of the presentation. Uh, another thing to note is that those concepts are merging. Uh, so the infrastructure-driven model and the application-driven model are merging. And uh, the requirements between the two applications, or between the two models, uh, feeds one another. Uh, so again, in Tosca, we have an application-centric view, and it's portable. In OpenStack, we're coming from the OpenStack resources into the application itself. And if we look at the next slide, we can actually see one incarnation of that. So in uh, the latest OpenStack uh, heat version, uh, in ISA, so actually not the latest, uh, there was an addition of a new component, which is called the uh, social config which really allows us, for the first time, to define things like depends on, hosted on, connects to, to software component. That's a relatively new thing in the, uh, uh, in the heat uh, template. On the other hand, as you could see in the uh, Tosca definition, first of all, you could see a definition for software component, like uh, MySQL. Uh, th that when I mentioned that every component, not just infrastructure, can be mapped, you could see that in this graph. There is lifecycle uh, events, which are more elaborated than the one that you would see with the heat. And uh, the things that is important here is this focus on the application management, the life cycle that is uh, mapped into the model itself. OK. So we'll switch to a quick model. Um, in this model, what we'll show is we'll show a deployment of WordPress. Um, and then after that, uh, the WordPress uh, deployment will be behind the firewall, exposed through a floating IP. Um, it will be used the radar integration. This is why I'm working. So this is the the <coughs> facts. okay? And um, we'll use the WordPress stack, and then we'll scale it out, and we'll scale it in. From a scenario perspective, uh, we didn't want to focus on deploying the actual uh, networking. We wanted to deploy on a more advanced use case, which is the elasticity one. So we've modified the uh, heat. Uh, workflow to use a pre-existing network. So using the standard demo project, which is usually available with an OpenStack, the uh, hot script will uh, deploy um, the two uh, WordPress VMs, the website and the database. We'll connect them to the network. We'll also deploy a load balancer configuration. And we'll use the hardware integration for Elbas to actually create a service VM running in their own project, highly available service VMs running on top of uh, Nova behind the scene. Then uh, using a, we'll run a script that will create load, and we'll see how the heat, heat will actually scale out and then scale back in when the load will be stopped. 
Um, if we look at the key uh, elements, and I'm focused on the ones that are different than the standard WordPress deployment, we can see first that there's the notion of a web server group. The key ones are the min and the max size, right? Those are the initial deployment size, how many VMs will be for the web, and then what's the max, which is in this case three. Um, the resources are a specialized extension of the Nova network called LB Server, and the extension is that the Nova node basically, in addition to being created, gets registered with the Elbus API as a, as a member. Uh, in addition, there's the scale up and scale down policy. And the things to note is that scale up defines 50% of uh, CPU alarm high as the trigger to actually scale up more nodes. And remember that because I'm going to ask a quick question about that. And then we have the load balancing APIs, which is the health check, the pools, etc. To create a new stack, uh, you currently must use a CLI command. Uh, there's a small bug in the web UI that doesn't allow to spin up stacks which, are, uh, which has embedded additional stacks in them. Um, the key things to uh, notice is basically you choose the, v the image, and this is kind of a change between what you're going to see with Tosca, right? So you specify a specific VM for the nodes, uh, the connectivity key, then you specify specific flavors, uh, the network where to deploy it, what's the subnet ID for that network, and then what, where the external network, because this is where the floating IP will be created. I need to, let me, okay. So, as said, the initial thing that's happening is that we are creating uh, the, the, the stack. As a result of that, uh, what we're going to see is that a stack instance is going to be created. Um, the stack instance, in essence, uh, what we're going to see is behind the scene um, the two virtual machines that are being deployed uh, by the load balancer integration. We see here two instances of a, a Alto and load balancer highly available behind the scene, which are now being will be used for the load balancing function. So this is, by the way, running on Red Hat, right? Right. This is running on Red Hat. Sorry, it's a and this is a, a fully. It's not a dev stack uh, single right. node. So environment. we took the out of the box Red Hat uh, ice house the uh, distribution. We deployed it, and then we've used the uh, um, scripts. Okay. Sorry. Um, the next thing is we can actually see that the stack is being created. Uh, as you can see, there is a specialized orchestration tab and where all the stacks are being shown. Um, and, <laughs> okay, wait. Yeah, there is well. only one person who knows this uh, number here. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Um, so the next thing is, um, Okay, so we can see that um, instances were created. Okay. Uh, and the key thing to see is that there are stack events that we will monitor in a second. Uh, the stack events are the one that will actually see the scale up and scale down. Um, as I said, this is the instances that were deployed. And uh, the next thing is that we, uh, we are going to connect to the one of those instances and we are going to run stress on it, okay? What stress will do, it will actually create CPU load on that. So the environment will start to monitor the, uh, sorry. Oh, come on. Let's go the confines. I just jumped to the, to the wrong stage. Okay. So what we can see is that um, the result of running the stack is that we actually got the load balancers now. Um, and then after that, we're going to review the stack itself. We can see the topology and the resources dependency model, as you can see. And then the key, uh, the key thing to actually see there is the event tab. And event tab will basically show us um, the events that we 
care about. And okay, in a second. So those are the deployed resources. And then we can see the events, okay? Here is where we are actually going to see the scale up and scale down. Um, the last thing that we're going to see is that uh, the... Uh, I'm going to jump forward for a second. We're going to see that the load balancing configuration has been deployed. We see the pool, we see the VIP. We can see the health check, and then we're going to see the uh, actual members, okay? So now we're seeing the, uh, the members being thing. connected to the load balancer? Right. Okay. And back to the stack. Which should be three members. Uh, uh, two members. Two the members. Uh, uh, database, right. uh, uh, sorry, just one member, sorry, this yep. case, just the web. Ah, that's okay. before the scale. Yeah, that's before the scale. Okay, what we can see now is the, the, the floating IP that got allocated and was assigned to the load balancer. And um, we're now going to launch the WordPress application. Um, and we can see that it's actually up and, wor and running. Okay? We will provide the actual reference to the YAML files after this uh, presentation as part of the uh, slides themselves. Okay. So this is the first stage. The first stage is that we've created a new stack. We've created a WordPress application. Um, it's behind the firewall, which uh, we've created also. The uh, script has created those uh, floating IP associated to the firewall. The configuration has gone into the firewall. So now what we're actually going to see is we can see the actual application. And I'll jump very quickly to it. Up and running. This is the first time. So we actually registered the first user. And then we can log in. Okay, so far this is the initial application deployment. The next phase is to actually see how this application scales out. So in order to do that, in this example we are logging into the uh, the node, the, the web node. Uh, we've associated another floating IP, so we can actually connect to it from the outside, and we are running a, a simple stress script. Simple stress uh, script. I'm going to jump a little bit forward just to. Okay. So you're triggering things through the CPU utilization, right? Right. So what we are going to see now is that the. Uh, on the machine itself, we can see that the machine top has gone to 100%. And as a result, we're going to see um, heat, a salometer triggering events into heat. And out of those events, uh, we're going to see uh, the scale up process, right? So, switching now back into the stack, we're going to monitor the events table. So we can see that we initially get a scaled down event, but it didn't trigger because we only already have one. But then there is the scale up event due to the fact that we are over 50%, right? So as a result of the scale up event, another node and another web has been added to the configuration. Looking at the at, uh, Nova, we can see that the second node was added, okay, another IP. And obviously, switching to the networking configuration, we can see that also the load balancer configuration was modified to include this node, okay? So now we have two nodes or three nodes? So now we have two nodes. What we're going to see in this after that is a third node that was added. So anyone has an idea why a third node would be added in that case? Right, because if you are 100% and you add a second node, then your average is still a bit over 150%, uh, which is how the original script was done. So then a second trigger is going to be done, and then a third node is going to go up. Okay. 
So this is just to make it more uh, different, then we can see that uh, the actual backend load balancer got configured and it has, uh, also has the three nodes. So what we've done so far is we've actually demonstrated uh, uh, scale up, okay? So the next thing is we've already logged in and we're gonna shut down the stress. And as a result, what we're gonna see here is that on the event, we're gonna see here a scale down policy triggered, okay? The scale down policy will take off one of the nodes, okay? So we see that we now only have two web server nodes and obviously the load balancer, the networking load balancer configuration is now get modified and we only see two nodes. So that concludes the elasticity demo. Yeah, so I think what we've seen so far is how we can take a template, create a full stack application uh, using heat uh, template and in one click basically <coughs> create that stack. We didn't have to go through, create Nova, create network, create instances, install software, all of those things have been, can be completely automated using that scripting model and using the orchestration itself. And you could see that you could also apply uh, policy using Silometer and HIT. Uh, one thing that uh, we'll see how Tosca plugs into that is add portability. That's the first thing. So how would you define the same template without necessarily doing it in a way that will run only within OpenStack? Uh, so two things to note, I'm not showing the entire uh, blueprint, uh, which is not that elaborated, but you could see the idea here is that we'll use uh, nodes type in this case that have a software node that reference to Apache. So we have components and not referencing to uh, a, a software that runs within a machine, but the software has an independent component here. So and that's how yeah. this is different than HIT? So in HIT, Apache wouldn't be a node. In HIT, Apache would be uh, an element that would run within a Nova Compute node. And that would be something that we'll know, but HIT wouldn't know about the fact that, HIT, that Apache is actually running within that machine. So there's, there's not anything that is mentioning a patch within uh, the context of heat, not in the monitoring, not in the elements that's itself that it's actually monitoring. That's, that's how it's built. Uh, in this case, every element, as I said, software component infrastructure is a node, and you could express it uh, explicitly in the blueprint itself and also apply lifecycle and all the properties that you could define. That's one thing. The other thing that you could see in the server itself, we reference into a type that is called compute, and we're matching by properties. We're not matching by in image ID. So we're specifying what we need, and we're expecting the system to react to that. Uh, it doesn't mean that we cannot implement node that will have an image ID as a property for that. But the idea is that you try to keep things agnostic from that respect. Another thing, so let's say that we have a portable way to describe things. Uh, that's one thing. But if we're still dependent on things that are very specific to OpenStack and we would run only within OpenStack in our rules or policy uh, management, then we're still, we're still very much specific to OpenStack. We cannot take that blueprint and run it somewhere else. Uh, so what we've done within the Cloudify project is we actually created uh, or took open source projects that are not specific to OpenStack, like Greenman for policy management. Those are, by the way, very popular projects. In my personal view, are much better than the one that I produced, the equivalent one that I produced within the OpenStack uh, StackForge projects, but that's a different discussion. Uh, mostly because they are used by the industry, they are proven, and the fact that they are used by the broad industry actually makes them better. Uh, so Riemann is, a, is quite a, an interesting project in that regard. Uh, I think something that uh, I would recommend any of you to look at. Uh, the other uh, project is called Diamond D. That's a collector, uh, which means that I can use it to collect SNMP traps and many other resources uh, through configuration, and we'll see how that configuration plugs into the uh, Tosca blueprint. And also an InfluxDB, which is a monitoring database. Uh, that's basically a specialized database. One of the things that we're gaining out of that is that there is already UI and a lot of ecosystem <coughs> that is already built around those tools, and we can leverage them rather than reinventing the wheel. Uh, and that's an important thing. So by doing that, by taking best of breed solution that are not specific to uh, an infrastructure itself, we can actually take that and put it also, uh, the entire thing, both the blueprint and the implementation, outside of that uh, uh, environment. So this is how the blueprint would look like. Uh, this is uh, still not in the standard itself, uh, but something that we're uh, hoping to be part of the standard. So you could see, for example, how I can configure the monitoring as part of the blueprint fairly easily. I can install the agent and basically say which property I want to monitor and how do I want to monitor it. 
and that becomes part of the life cycle of the component, in this case, the WordPress VM itself. The second thing that we could see is the policy itself to trigger the, uh, the workflow. In this case, it's a scale-up process. So what you could see is that I can explicitly and very elaborately define the policy within that language. Again, this is a suggestion, not yet a, a standard. Uh, and it's very readable. I can read it and understand what's going on. I don't need to integrate too many things to actually make it work and write script that behind the scenes will do the exact task. So the idea is that the model, the policy, the workflow will be part of the language, will be part of the blueprint, will be part of the implementation, and not something that I'm integrating through different components. Now, how do we combine the two? So is that an alternative to one another? Actually, we did a project in which we integrated uh, the uh, Tosca implementation, uh, in this case with Cloudify, with HIT. And we use HIT for the place in which we feel that it fit best. And the place in which it fit best is setting up the infrastructure itself. And the way it's laid out is that we're looking at HIT as the cloud interface. So instead of going to Nova, we're going to HIT to create VMs, create network, HIT as a REST API, so it's actually pretty convenient. And we use it also for discovery. So if you installed or deployed the stack with HIT and created VMs and created network, we can actually discover that. So as part of our blueprint, the first thing that we do is do a discovery through HIT, see if that node already exists. And if it exists, we only use it and not create an instance of that. What that gives us, the fact that every cloud environment would have its own infrastructure orchestration, we could layer the application orchestration on top of the infrastructure orchestration, and in that case, leverage the two together and actually build a much more robust solution as a result of that, and still keep the portability as a result of that. So from an individual perspective, what we're getting is a portable management and orchestration that works across cloud, as I mentioned, and can also interact not just with the infrastructure layer, but also with the orchestration of the infrastructure itself. So the other thing that uh, I wanted to show is, we talked about WordPress, but WordPress is a, is a simple example. The next thing that I wanted to talk is real life example. And for example, the interruption that we had in this demo, and I'm not going to use that because we're running out of time, was actually a result of this example, uh, and someone actually trying that out. Uh, so what we wanted is based on uh, an example that we did with one of the carriers that wanted and downloaded the, the, uh, the project and tried to create your own Skype. So imagine what would it take to create your own video service, your own chat server, your own uh, CRM, your own SaaS service. That will include a huge stack with a lot of elements, with a lot of configuration. And the question, can I model something like that that could be potentially very complex? And this is <laughs> part of that service actually being running right now and someone in, uh, consistently trying to show that it works. Uh, <laughs> I, I told him to, to skip it for the demo, but he didn't want to let it go. So anyway, you see that it works. <laughs> so someone Skype him to tell him that uh, it works and he can rest. Uh, anyway, uh, this is the stack and this is a project uh, that is called Clearwater. Clearwater, for those who are not familiar, it lets the kind of Skype equivalent in the telco world. It's called an IMS. Uh, it's basically providing the multimedia services, the same thing that you do with the video service, chat service, uh, very similar to Google Hangout, very similar to Skype uh, from that end. But I think the important thing to, to see is the complexity of that deployment. There is a lot of services. There is a lot of dependency between those services. And this is what you want to provision. So uh, we did create a model. Uh, this is actually the Cloudify UI, and we created a Tosca reference to that I'm going to show you live right now. Uh, it's actually running on OpenStack. In this case, it's HP OpenStack. Uh, so this is a live deployment that I'm running right now on HP. How are we doing on time? We should uh, you have a minute. Okay. So within one minute, I'm going to just give you a glimpse of the idea behind it. Uh, so what I did is I created a blueprint. Uh, I can see the, this was the graphical view of that. And you could see all the dependencies. These are the software component. These are the, the VMs. The software component, by the way, are defined by Chef. Uh, so if I look at the source code of that, I go to the Tosca uh, YAML file, what you could see is that some of the nodes are actually referencing to Chef to define the component themselves. But I can also see the lifecycle uh, for installing the monitoring and configuring the monitoring. In this case, it's an SNMP traps an SNMP uh, 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 metering that I'm actually uh, configuring to monitor because that's how that software component 
Clearwater specifically comes with SNMP monitoring and not something else. But I could describe it in the, uh, in the uh, Tosca definition and not deal with that uh, manually as well. Now, going back to the topology, once I've created the topology, I can create different instances of that. Why do I want to create different instances? For example, for QA, I want a smaller deployment. For production, I want a bigger deployment, maybe with different flavors of machines and so forth. So the way I'm creating it is that I'm keeping the model as the golden, if you'd like, definition, and then I'm putting properties and parameters for every instance of that deployment. And that's the difference between what you see here as a blueprint and deployment. So the blueprints would be the meta definition, and deployments would be the instances of that. And you could create more than one instance per deployment, and we can see that they're all green, meaning that they're all running, which gives me another model to see the state of the union, or the state of the application as it is running. What we've seen before, and I'm not going to try it out right now because, again, we're running out of time, is that I can actually call that service and use a client here. Again, you'll have to trust me that it works. That actually do those video calls, do those chats, do those <coughs> elements in the... I hope it won't answer. <laughs> but anyway, I can actually call that service. It's a service that is ready and live and working. And I can open a chat and I can open a video, li a video line with that service. And it's not... Uh, <laughs> 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 I'll wake the bear from his sleep again. Okay. Uh, but you get the idea. It's working, trust me. And uh, you could see that uh, some of the uh, voice here actually indicates that it works. Okay. Any questions so far? No questions. Okay. Right. Why not using heat environment for differentiation? No, no, no. It's not. Uh, the difference between uh, heat scripts and Tosca is that in Tosca you could, you could still map that into different blueprints and files. Actually, if you look at the left-hand side, there is a lot of files there. Uh, it's actually more of an object model versus a file model uh, in which you describe the components and how you, how you break them into files is, uh, is, is less relevant. Uh, the, uh, to your point, I think that y we've, you've seen, and that was the purpose of the presentation, that you could do that with heat. And you could do that with Tosca. And you could combine the two. Now, the question is really uh, the using the, the right tool for the job. And, and in my view, if you look at HIT, I think the, the HIT would do a very good job for orchestrating OpenStack infrastructure. You wouldn't use HIT, for example, and you could, as an alternative to Chef or Puppet or Docker. You would combine it as a, as a, as a plugin that runs within, within HIT, for example. right? But this is an example in which you created a border in which you'd say, well, I can implement a configuration management for OpenStack, but you stopped there and said, I'm actually going to integrate with some open source that, that exists and does a better job on that rather than re-implementing the wheel. Same thing that I'm saying about Tosca. There is better tools that does uh, the application orchestration, software orchestration, as I would call it, policy management, workflow management. And the other thing that I'm saying, we want them to be portable. Because look, look at even what happens in the application that runs on your iPhone or your Android. You don't want the application to be specific to iPhone or to Android, or only target iPhone, or only target Android, right? You want them to be running on both, and actually all of the applications. So, so, so the thing that I'm saying is that the more you're going up the stack, you want the software to be independent of the infrastructure itself, and that's a best practice, the right thing to do things. So it's not that you can't. You can. Just what's the right thing to do? Yes, and, and one of the things that I'm, I'm not sure if I touched, there is actually a project that is called Tosca Translator for Heat. And uh, the Tosca Translator actually create uh, a Tosca, uh, if you'd like, a definition that could run within a Heat engine. So what I'm saying is that I think, that, and that's, the, that's a good thing, is that the two worlds are converging. And we'll see less need for doing mapping between the two worlds, which means that it would be much easier even to combine the two, because they will be using the same language. Yes. Without the logic, yes. Right. Other questions? Yes. 
Uh, can someone close the door because I can't hear you? is more of application specification and uh, the provisioning we want to do it through the heat but heat all itself is having software config and software deploy and apart from the tosca uh, the uh, which which configuration management tool you want to use for the tosca for example you create the two tier topology topology in this case yes so that's a good question the question is which which configuration management would i want to use yeah. within the context of tosca so uh, what we basically uh, providing today as a plugin is both Chef, Puppet, or Docker. The reason why I mentioned Docker in the context of a configuration management is because I see Docker as a portable packaging model for software. Because it's not independent on the actual infrastructure itself, I can take a package that was built with Docker and move it between OpenStack and Amazon, for example, and I know that it's going to run. Uh, so in a way, people would look at Docker as an alternative to Chef and Puppet, even though it's not doing the same thing and it's not the exact thing, and they can be combined as well. But from, from, uh, from a Cloudify perspective, we do support both of them. So you could plug in whichever configuration management that you want, including, by the way, Bash. So you could actually write scripts to do yeah. your configuration management. So your recommendation is that you use Tosca plus this configuration management tool. Right. And then heat you just provision the uh, server. The infrastructure. Neutron, neutron, agent exactly. And, things, and don't try to use the software config and Yes. Like. Okay. That's, that's, my, what I'm, that's what I'm recommending. You don't have to follow that, but that's yeah, what yeah. I would recommend. Yeah. Thanks. What's the backend required to implement a new feature? Let's say Neutron adds a new feature, creates a new API. How do I extend it up into Tosca? Like, what are the steps required? And how easy is it to see it? Yeah, so, I would, uh, so right now it's a manual process. You have to do that mapping manually. I would envision that you could actually uh, automate that process and have uh, an auto generator that will actually go through an API, especially if you know the structure of that API, and order to generate the types that are relevant to that. Uh, going forward, and I think that's the, the, the best news that's coming out of the fact that there is a Tosca parser within Heat, is that all the definition would be uh, compliant with Tosca. So I would expect that with every OpenStack release, there would be a Tosca resources and definition coming with that release, and not something that you'll have to regenerate yourself, and therefore we could just import that into our Tosca implementation and not repass it or regenerate it, and that's the direction that I think it should go. So that I can actually import those things again without regenerating that, and it will be generated pretty much like code is being generated today. There's no reasons why it wouldn't come with the release. With every release, there would be the task of resources that, that, that maps to that release. Sure. Any other question? Yeah. Uh, I can't see. Yeah. Uh, light. Question: uh, For I, think I know that for uh, for now, Cloudify works very well with OpenStack using uh, Nova API. So, uh, what Hit brings to make you to decide to using Hit instead of using the Open uh, OpenStack? Yeah. So the word yeah. instead is uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't use the word instead. In addition, first, the so second is that people do use Hit today and plan to use Hit probably tomorrow, mm -hmm. and we want it to be compliant with that. And and for uh, as I said. Because it provides the ability to do discovery on the resources that it created, we find ways in which we can actually combine the two together and not force yet another implementation of the entire thing. There are different people who already have templates that be built in HIT. So in, in this case, we, we wanted to make the integration of the two much simpler and wouldn't f you know, uh, we wouldn't want to throw on you the task of doing the mapping and do that type of integration. We can actually combine the two. And do you still maintaining the uh, maintaining the comp compatibility with uh, an over Nova API or yes, in the future yes, yes. Would you work with it? So uh, that's uh, I can't answer that question. The question for those who didn't hear, if we continue to maintain within Cloudify the compatibility with uh, with the Nova API, because we do have a way in which we can run very similarly to to Heat directly with Nova and through the Heat API. And the, the answer is that at, at this point we will probably implement both because there is a requirement for both. Uh, customers need them both, and as long as there is a requirement for both, we will support them both. If at some point it will be all switched to it, then we can deprecate it and basically just use it as the interface, as our uh, main interface to OpenStack. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions?
So again, as I said, all the resources, and we have a reference to that, all the resources, including the examples, the heat examples, the uh, YAML examples, uh, the demo itself can be downloadable. Uh, obviously, the references to that. Uh, maybe uh, last uh, points, uh, Shmuel, on, the, on this? Nope. <laughs> That's a short answer. <laughs> so you could read it yourself. Thanks very much.